Would you please rise as we join together in singing our gathering song, Gather Us In, number 532. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4. It's in your red worship book. Good morning. Good morning. Grace and peace to you this morning. You may be seated at this time. And I want to welcome you to Zion on this beautiful Sunday morning, which is also Rally Sunday. And so kind of baseball is our theme, and so I want you to notice America's number one team right here. So, maybe not so much this year. But as people of faith, there's always hope. Always hope. Well, again, it is so great to celebrate a, a new year where we are all, just not our children, but we are all growing in our faith. And so we're going to talk a little bit more about what it means to be a disciple and discipleship and the process that God uses, us, uses to help us to grow in our faith. And so that's going to be our focus today. I'll also say a little bit more about it, but after... Uh, worship today, we're continuing that baseball theme, and so we're going to invite you down to the fellowship hall. We got coffee treats, but we also have uh, bratwurst, and we have hot dogs, and we have like chips and baked beans and all kinds of awesome stuff. And don't pay any attention to that Michigan study that says for every hot dog you eat, you're going to lose 33 minutes of your life. So we've <laughs> these are special hot dogs. <laughs> but if that's true, then I'm only going to live about five more years. So, but anyhow, it is a great, just a wonderful time to be here together. Well, we're going to have a prayer, and then we're going to uh, join together in singing a, a gathering song that was written by Jill and John right here at church, kind of based on the, the tune of Take Me Out to the Ballpark, but we'll get to that to the minute, and an interactive call to worship. But let us bow our heads and open our hearts to God in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Gracious Lord God, we just thank you for the gift of this amazing, beautiful day. We thank you, Lord, that we can be together 
as a Christian family with so many different generations all coming together this morning, Lord, to praise you and to worship you. We thank you for the gift of your spirit, and we pray that you would lead us into a deeper understanding of what it means to be a disciple, a follower of you, and how we can grow into your image. In your holy name, we pray. Amen. So you have a bulletin insert, and on your bulletin insert, there is the words to take me out to the ballpark. So we're going to try to sing this together with with John today. And John, do you have any instructions for us on on how we're supposed to do this? Oh, yes, I do have instructions. (laughs) Um, Yes, and welcome. It's, It's good to see you. It's good to see you all here on Rally Sunday. Um, I was thinking last night, I became a member of this church uh, back in November of 1941. And I was was eight years old at that time. And I got to thinking, it took me 80 years to get to this position. (laughs) And what an honor it is to be able to lead you this morning. And I hope this works out. And like the pastor said, there is hope. So some of you folks that feel, oh, I don't get nothing to do here. Your time might be coming. <laughs> um, and this, yes, this has been professionally wrote. Uh, there is a, the second verse was written by, uh, by somebody else. I'm not sure who that is, but um, it, um, Jill and I did write the, uh, the first and the third verse, or I, I wrote the third verse, so. I, I want to take big credit for that. <laughs> so, and I'll just kind of give a little demonstration as to how it's kind of go because I take us to Rally Sunday. Jesus welcomes us all with prayers and verses and songs and joy. Meet all your friends, every girl and boy. We will all have a good time. It's Rally Sunday again, cause it's one, two, three, and one, and we welcome you in. You know, you're doing all right out there. Let's go all the way from the beginning again. Um, And I'm hearing you, so it's good. Okay, here we go, this time all the way through. Take us to Rally Sunday, Jesus welcomes us all with prayers and verses and songs and joy. Meet all your friends, every girl and boy. We will all have a good time. It's Rally Sunday again. Cause it's one, two, three, and one. And we welcome you in. Trust the Lord with all your heart. Trust the Lord with your soul. Jesus will always have your back, and he'll keep you on the right track. Glory to Father, Son, Holy Ghost, in his name we will pray, and all God's people will shout hallelujah today. Take us to Rally Sunday, Jesus is our light, through stories and Awesome. Thank you. Well, I'm going to invite you to join me in our, in our call to worship, and it's interactive. So I know it's early, but you got to get energized for this, just like you're kind of at the ballpark, and you can kind of see how we're going to start with, as we get into Psalm 146 with praise the Lord, and you can just sort of see how it builds as we go through it. And then at the very end, We're going to kind of go back and forth with praise the Lord and glory to God. So if you're on the right side over here, 
you're going to respond with praise the Lord. And if you're on the left side, you're going to do glory to God. And if you can stand for it, we'd love to have you do it. It's our version of praising God and doing the wave at the same time. So we'll see what you got in you today. Oh, yeah, OK. So does everybody have one of these? OK, you got your hanky. So, so let's say if you're on the left side, you get your yellow banner, OK? So this is like your Homer hanky, right? So when you stand or just put your arm up, you can wave it. Over here, you guys are the red side, OK? Now this is, this is going to take a lot of coordination for me. To <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. All right. Well, let us join together in our call to worship. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praises to my God as long as I live. Amen. Right on. Don't put your trust in princes and human beings who cannot save. Boo. No way I'll trust them. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He is the maker of heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He remains faithful forever. Our God is an awesome God. He upholds the cause of the oppressed and gives food for the hungry. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord set prisoners free. The Lord gives sight to the blind. Our God is an awesome God. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. Woo! Praise the Lord, my soul. The Lord reigns oh, forever. Your God, O Zion, all generations. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. 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 All right, you got it. Took a little while to warm up, but that was pretty awesome. Well, we do have an awesome God, and so we're going to just sing about that here, and we'll go through it once here. Let us sing. I'd like to welcome you, too, to worship this morning. And uh, just uh, in uh, competition with uh, Pastor Fred here a little bit, uh, I have a mask that Joan made for me this morning, which is uh, a gender neutral <laughs> kind of mask. So it's uh, for baseball and not necessarily for the Twins or the Brewers or the Cubs, as Joan it would be for. But uh, thank you for joining us in worship this morning. We're happy to have, have you here. The prayer of the day that we share here, but when we pray this prayer, perhaps not this one this morning because it's specific to us, but we think of the Christian community 
in our neighborhood, in our state, in our country, and around the world that we share when we pray the prayer of the day. Let us pray. Gracious Jesus, we pray that as Sunday school children, confirmation students, and adults gather each week to worship and study your word, that your Holy Spirit will bless them and guide them. May your spirit create in us a passion to not only grow in our faith, but to become an instrument of your love so that all people will come to know that they are children of God and inheritors of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first reading for us this morning comes from the Old Testament, the book of Deuteronomy, and uh, perhaps one of the primary verses that the uh, Jewish community gave and extended on into the Christian community that we hear this morning. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk, walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your house and on your gates. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
At this time, I'd like to invite the kids to come forward for our time. So all you kids out there, if you can just come right down up in front. There comes Isaac. He's leading the way. So come on up, guys. Awesome to see you this morning. Just have a seat right on the floor here. Be comfortable. So you can see the screen. Yeah, good morning. Come on up. Come on up. Here, have a seat. So you can see the screen up there. Everybody see that OK? OK. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Hi. You want to come and sit here? You want to sit by me? OK, you can sit by me. Yeah, come on in. So you can sit on the steps. You can sit right in front, too, because you want to kind of see that guy's picture up there. So we're going to talk about Mitch in a second. But it's wonderful to have you here today for our Rally Sunday. And it's wonderful for me to be able to spend this time talking to you about how much fun and how awesome it is to be a Minnesota Twins fan. <laughs> No, that's not what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about discipleship and being a disciple. So who's heard the word disciple before? Okay, so it's kind of a new one. Who thinks they know what it means to be a disciple? What do you think? Like God's follower. Yeah, it's really good. Like God's follower. Yeah, so a disciple who is someone who's committed their lives to somebody and learning from them. They want to be like them. And so you see this guy back here? Mitch, Mitch Hanniger? Yeah. Mitch Hanniger loves baseball. You can probably tell. He's a professional baseball player. But for many years, Mitch couldn't make it to the major leagues because he just wasn't a good enough hitter. But Mitch had this passion for baseball, and he had this dream for baseball. And so he decided that he was going to be a disciple or a student of the game. And he sought out somebody who he was told was the greatest hitting instructor uh, around. And so Mitch committed himself to this guy and to learning how to be a hitter. And he said he had to change himself physically and mentally and even spiritually. That he had to grow spiritually and to be more thankful for what he had. And so every day, Mitch was passionate and he would get up and he would practice and he would practice and he would practice and he would practice. And, would practice. and pretty soon, after two years, Mitch not only made it to the major leagues, but he became an all-star. Isn't that pretty amazing? Now, as Christians, I had a ladder. you what? I had a ladder. You had a ladder? Yeah. You did? Yeah. Well, this is kind of like climbing a ladder. Yeah, thank you. That was good. And so, one of the things that we do is we want to commit ourselves to Jesus. And just like Mitch had this amazing passion for baseball, we want to have this passion for Jesus. And just like every day, Mitch was trying to see how he could grow as a baseball player. We want to grow as Christians. And we do that by coming to church. We do that by going to Sunday school. We do that by learning to read our Bible. And we do that by learning how to serve and to love other people. And so you guys today are living into what it means to be a disciple. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about this with the adults out here. But I have some pictures with the sermon and see if you can kind of think about that and follow that. Does that sound good? Yeah. yeah, OK, I thought you might say so. That's awesome. All right, well, we're going to have a prayer. So can you all fold your hands with me? OK, yep. And we are going to bow our heads, and we are going to pray to God. And you can even hop while you pray. That's OK. <laughs> God loves your passion. <laughs> so gracious Jesus, uh, we thank you for choosing us to be your disciples. And we want to be your disciples. And so we're committing ourselves to you today, Lord. And we pray for your spirit that it will create a love and a passion for us that will not only grow in our faith, but that we'll become like you, Jesus, and to live like you and to love like you so that all might experience your grace. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, you guys head back to your folks. We're going to invite everybody to stand, and we're going to join in singing our gospel acclamation, Thy Word. So.
in our Lutheran tradition, the word is at the center of our lives and of our worship as we come together. And uh, oftentimes on Sunday morning, we have three appointed uh, texts from the word, the Psalm, the first lesson, which is generally from the Old Testament. The second reading is generally from the New Testament of the epistles or the letters that are there. And the fourth part is the gospel. And uh, this morning we uh, read from the first reading, which is uh, Deuteronomy. And now we're going to read from the gospel, which is uh, the appointed gospel for reading. And it is from the gospel of Luke. And oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes we stand in giving respect to the word and to the Christ which is revealed in that word. The Gospel from St. Luke chapter 24. Now that same day, two of them were going to the village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? And they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem and do not know the things that have happened here in these days? What things, Jesus asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But he had hoped, but we had hoped that he was the one who might be going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. But him they did not see. Jesus said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. And they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to them. Uh, to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognized him. And he disappeared from their sight. And they asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and also with them assembled together. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may be seated at this time. I remember back in the, the 1990s, there was kind of this move, new movement in Christianity. It's called the church growth movement. And so the whole emphasis is on how can we develop these ministries and these strategies to go out and to invite people to our church so that they be, can become members of the church. And I don't think we kind of realized what we were doing. Because when we look to the scriptures, one thing that we see with Jesus is Jesus really wasn't interested in membership. What Jesus was interested in is discipleship. And sometimes when you can get so focused on membership, what you do is you try to come up with all of these strategies. Well, how can we get more members so that we can have more volunteers, so we can develop more programming, 
and then we can put more money into it so that we can attract more members, and then the cycle goes over and around and around and around. <laughs> but again, what Jesus is interested in is discipleship. What does it mean to become a committed follower of Jesus? And what's that process that we go through in order to be transformed? And so again, when we think about what discipleship is, and if you can say, see this, why don't you read it with me? Discipleship is the process of being miraculously changed into the image of Christ through the gracious working of the Holy Spirit for the sake of the world. That's the whole point or goal of discipleship, that you would be reborn in the likeness of Jesus and transcend yourself so that others might be healed, restored, and saved. And so it's this whole process of transformation that we're going to talk about today, because a lot of times we don't realize this process or these stages that God uses, Jesus uses, to transform us, not only in the image of Jesus, but to be able to transcend ourselves. That's the whole point, that being a follower of Jesus and walking on this earth isn't about you. It's not what you can get out of it, but it's how can you worship God? How can you glorify Jesus? How can you bring forth his kingdom? And we can see this as we journey with the disciples through the gospel story, and in particular in our lesson from Emmaus today. And so what does this process look like for us? Well, stage one is to recognize our need for Jesus, and Jesus becomes real. And one of the things we have to realize is that you can grow up going to church and know about Jesus, but not know Jesus. <laughs> And there's, there's a big difference. And we can see this, that when Jesus becomes real for you, everything in your life changes. So when Peter and, and, his, and his brothers and others are fishing by the sea, they're just kind of going through life. They grew up in the faith. But when Jesus shows up in the power of the Spirit, it touches them in such a way that their lives are never the same. And they leave their old life behind because they want to become a follower. They want to become a disciple of Jesus Christ. I remember reading about John Wesley, who became the founder of Methodism, the Methodist Church. And Wesley, true, had grown up in the faith, but God and Jesus kind of seemed like something, someone out there. And then a friend of his invited him to a prayer service and to a Bible study. And they were reading Luther's preface to the book of Romans, or the letter to the church in Rome. And as Wesley is praying, and as they're reading, he says, all of a sudden, he says, my heart was strangely warmed. That I truly felt the presence of Jesus in my life for the first time, and I knew that I would never be the same. And that's what Jesus desires for all of us. And so maybe you've had that experience. Maybe you haven't. But if you haven't had that experience, Jesus is here for you today. And he wants you to experience his grace and his love and his presence. But when Jesus becomes real for us, all of a sudden, we not only have this growing passion for Jesus, but we have this desire and this passion to grow deeper in our faith. And so you know when you're living into it because all of a sudden there's this something inside of you that you want to go worship Jesus. And just not on Sunday. You want to worship Jesus every day because you realize that Jesus is, or worship isn't just something that you go through, but worship is an attitude of the heart. And at the heart of worship is offering that I'm going to offer up this day, I'm going to offer up my life to you, Jesus. And I want to walk in your ways. And I know that if I'm going to truly walk in your ways, then I have to be in your word. Because when we read the scriptures, they're not simply words on a page, but as Paul says, they are full, that they are filled with the Spirit of God, the breath of God. And so when you come with a passion and a hunger in your heart, to study God's word, 
there's a divine encounter between you and Jesus. But the question is, do you want that? Because there's a lot of other things that are pulling for your attention. When I grew up as a kid, I was passionate, but I wasn't passionate about God. I was passionate about sports. And I kind of still am. But is there anybody passionate about sports? Yeah. In fact, when I was a kid, I was so passionate about playing sports that I couldn't even sleep the night before we would go to practice. And when I got there, I was not only so excited to practice, but when I got home from practice, I would practice some more. I would practice my stick handling. I would practice my running. I had to get my moves down. I would practice batting, and I would practice catching because I wanted to become like Rod Carew. I wanted to become like Bobby Orr. I wanted to become like Chuck Foreman. If you're too young to know who they are, the first one's a baseball player, the second one's a hockey player, and the third one's a football player. But then when Jesus became real for me in stage one, would I realize that I did not have the same passion for Jesus as I did for sports? Then I thought about how would my life be different if I had the same passion and commitment to Jesus? And if all of us had that same compassion, passion, how different would our world be? I guarantee you it wouldn't be the world we're living in today. And so there's this desire to grow. It's not even like a burden or a duty. It's just something you want to do because you're feeling Jesus come alive in you. Well, we continue to grow. And all of a sudden, now we've been learning, but the whole focus has been on us, and we realize that as this thankfulness and gratitude wells up inside of us, we realize that it's not really about me and what I can get out of my relationship with Jesus and what I'm learning, but now is the time for me that God's calling me to step out in faith. And sometimes we find ourselves stepping out in ways that we couldn't even imagine. I remember Tracy when I was serving at Cross of Hope in Ramsey. Had always been really shy, really quiet. And all of a sudden, as she was living into this third stage of growth and development, she could feel God calling her to go out and to serve as a missionary in Mexico. This is someone who hardly ever wanted to leave Ramsey. <laughs> And even though she found the whole experience kind of terrifying, the spirit of God and the love of God was growing inside of her and encouraging her to say, you can step out, Tracy. You can volunteer. You can do this. Don't be afraid. I'm going to be with you. And she not only led a mission trip to Juarez, but in that process she was transformed and became the missionary of the church. And not only was her life changed, but the people who went with her and our church was changed through her ministry as she was teaching us how to step out in faith. Well, that all sounds really good, right? But then where God does his best work is here. And it's called the, the wall or the dark night of the soul. Luther writes about this when he was going through his life and his ministry and he went through a really difficult time. And he was scared and he was overwhelmed. And he writes that my faith is hanging by a thread. And we can experience the dark night of the soul or the wall in kind of three ways. Sometimes we go through times of tragedy. God does not want us to go through these things, but we live in a fallen and a broken and a fallible world. And if you haven't suffered yet, you will. And when we experience that dark night of the soul where we come running right into the wall, our whole world is turned upside down. And often our whole belief system is turned upside down. Especially when we experience a loss or tragedy. God, I thought that you were this all-powerful God of love. Why am I going through this, right? And so all these questions start to come up. Sometimes we run headlong into the wall or we enter into this dark night of the soul because of the decisions that we've made. 
I experienced that in my early 20s. I thought it was smart. I thought I knew what I was doing. I wanted to live my life the way I wanted to live it. And I went right into that wall. And that's when Jesus became real for me. Because it humbled me. And, and it always does when we're in this stage. Or sometimes, again, we've just been going to church. We've been studying our Bible. We've been serving. And sometimes it just gets old and it gets boring and it gets stale. And it's like being out in the wilderness. Why am I going to church? Why am I reading my Bible? Why am I doing all this service? I'm just feeling drained. I'm not getting anything out of it. But like Gerhard Frost, the great North Dakota theologian said, he says, every Christian, just like wheat, needs a drought because it forces the roots to grow deep. And when we're in this stage, what we realize is that we are no longer in control, that you can't just pull yourself up by your bootstraps. And it humbles us, right? And God says in Proverbs that God opposes the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And so it's out of that wall experience that now the journey really becomes inward and it becomes deep. And when Luther talks about faith or saving faith, this is what he talks about. It's just not simply believing and it's just not simply about doing, but it's about surrendering. It's about letting go. It's about trusting that I thought I knew the way, I thought I had all of the answers, but maybe I'm not as strong or as smart as I think I am. And so now we allow Jesus to shepherd us and to lead us. And that's where the real transformation of discipleship begins. And as Jesus leads us into this deeper, abiding, loving relationship, his love begins to grow not only in us, but through us in an amazing way. And we live into what Paul writes about in Galatians 2.20. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me but Christ who lives in me. Anybody know who this lady is? Anybody guess? Who is she? Mother Teresa. And Mother Teresa was really no different than any one of us. What makes Mother Teresa kind of unique was not only her passion for Jesus, but her willingness to allow Jesus to transform her from the inside out and to send her wherever Christ needed her. There was a woman that was like that, that I grew up in church with. And I'll never forget, I was in middle school, like some of you are. And Jesus had been working in her life, changing and transforming her. And she got up in front of the congregation and she had this blank piece of paper. And at the bottom, she signed her name. She said, Jesus, I'm giving my life to you. I'm signing off. I'm giving my life for you. I want you to fill in the rest. <laughs> Think about that. I want you to fill in the rest of my day. I want you to fill in the rest of my week. I want you to fill in the rest of my life. And she was willing to go because the love of God had squenched the fear that sometimes holds us back from truly loving other people. And this is what it looks like to be a mature disciple. That we have now transcended ourselves. It's no longer about us. But how can I truly embody Jesus for you? How can I truly embody Jesus' love for the stranger? the forsaken, the marginalized. And the beauty of being church is we get to practice this every week. <laughs> that we are here for one another as a Christian family. And so today is the beginning of the journey into a new year of discipleship, a summons by Jesus to walk with him. Let us pray. 
Jesus, we thank you that we can be together here today in worship, and we pray again for your spirit to anoint us, to come upon us, to create a passion in us, Lord, so that we will not only walk in your ways, but be transformed into your image, so that we can be instruments of your love for your glory and to bring forth your kingdom. In your holy name we pray, amen. Well, at this time, I'm going to invite you to take out your hymn books, your red worship books, and we'll turn to hymn number 798, and we will sing the summons, and you may remain seated for this. This morning, in response to what Pastor Fred has been sharing with us and our worship together, we make confession of our faith or declaration of our faith, and as we do that, we use the Apostles' Creed, which goes way back to the disciples who were walking on the road to Emmaus and what they discovered in their life in relationship to Jesus. I'd like to ask you to use your bulletin. The Apostles' Creed is uh, written in your bulletin. Will you please stand as we share and declare our faith together? I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, in every baseball game, there's a seventh inning stretch, and for us, that's called the passing of the peace. And so, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us take a moment to share the peace of Christ with one another this morning. standing and we're going to sing together just in verse one that we are one in the spirit, we're one in the Lord. seated as we invite the ushers to come forward this morning to receive our tithes and offerings and our men's group shares their gift of music.
Would you please rise for our doxology? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for always being present in our lives and the many blessings, especially the gift of your Son. And as we gather today in worship, we also remember 9-11, we remember the families and how uh, the, just the tragedy and the loss that so many have experienced. And we pray your blessing and comfort upon them. And again, we pray that you would equip us and send us out to be your peacemakers in the world. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for guiding us and leading us and teaching us, especially the prayer that you have given us that we join in together at this time. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, just again, just a reminder, we invite you to come and join us for hot dogs, bratwurst, and all the, the fixings. And I'm going to have, yep, Lila and Kelly come on forward. And Sorry, Pastor Fred, I know that you were counting on a dunk tank, but I did not come through with that today, awesome. so sorry. <laughs> Thought he'd be running out the back door. <laughs> uh, Lila Larson and myself, Kelly DeGrosse, are helping Annette with um, the Sunday School this year, and coming back from a pandemic, it's looking a little different, so bear with us. Um, we are doing what we can, and we need some assistance. Um, today, we wanted to let you know that the service is looking a little differently. We kept all of the students um, and teachers in the service today, and next week, we'll have a couple of classes staying in each week, um, but after the children's sermon, that's when we will dismiss and send the kiddos and teachers out to um, their classrooms. So today, we just, with our Rally Sunday, we thought it was great to have everybody in here with us. Um, we do have a couple teachers that are out already this morning, so again, please bear with us. We might ask a couple parents to step up at, at the time. It's just um, a couple of minutes in the classrooms, so um, you can get to know your teachers, where your classrooms are. All the uh, classrooms, second grade and below, will be in the hallway, hallways down this way. Second is on the far, but all the rest of them, I believe, are on your way to the fellowship hall. Third grade and through ninth grade will be in the new addition in the basement down that way. Classrooms are all marked. Um, and we'll dismiss here before the last song, um, teachers and students, and uh, meet out in the hallway. Uh, let's see, what else do I need to tell you? Um, we want to thank Culver's for their generous donation of the custard today. So make sure you stick around and have some of that with your brats and hot dogs. We are still in need of a couple of teachers and some subs. It may just be one Sunday a month. Um, it, you can pick your grade. So if there's parents, um, non-parents, anyone that's willing to help us out, please do uh, let us know on that. Um, let's see. I think lastly, cookies and coffee will be served until we get the kiddos in there for starting our tailgate party. So feel free to meet us in the fellowship hall. And parents, you can certainly pick up your, your kids there. 
afterwards. Um, we'll have a few prizes to give out, so stick around for that. Um, Lila, anything that I'm missing? Annette, would you like to say something? You know me, I always got something to say. Right? All right. <laughs> Um, if you filled out the registration online, you do not need to fill out the paper one. That's just for those who didn't register online. And are we coming back to the fellowship or the sanctuary no. next week? No. Um, for now, let's just meet in the. the okay. So plan on meeting your kids after Sunday school in the fellowship hall. I'll tell you here otherwise. That's all I can think of for the moment. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, yeah. We'll have the students and teachers follow us all. Yep. Okay, so as they're heading out, we're going to have all this, the kids and teachers follow Lila and Kelly out so you can go at this time. Does that mean they're going to get hot dogs first? There's a... <laughs> I am afraid there won't be any for me. That's all right. All right, well, they're heading out. Let us receive the blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious unto us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and grant us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, let's stand and join together in singing our ascending hymn, which is Go My Children With My Blessing, number 543. Head back to the fellowship hall, you can go ahead and grab coffee and, and all the fixings. Uh, so, and the kids will meet you back there. But go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks. Thanks.